Hey everyone, I'm Jasmine from Sheedness, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. This project that, this band that you have going on right now has been quite some time in the making. Um, I know you've gone through kind of various lineup changes and kind of names as well at the same time. Like, why did you feel that this band and lineup that you have now is like the one, the one to kind of get that debut single out and going? Oh man, it's definitely been so crazy. And the thing about bands is like, it's like you're in a relationship with everybody that you're making music with because music is such a personal thing. Um, the reason I feel like where I'm at right now is really dope is because mostly just because Ben and Connor, Ben on the drums, Connor on the guitar, they're just insanely talented musicians and I'm just a baby. <laughs> so I know where I'm, where I need to go. And I know that they have already been there. So it's nice to have them on my side they're just they're so good so it helps a lot <laughs> <laughs> so i you know i remember like i feel like this was like literally like a year or so ago but i remember our mutual friend nicole emberg was like hey listen to this girl like i've been doing some stuff in the studio with her or, or like and first of all your voice was completely different um, and second of all, if I remember clearly, it was more on the, the folk side or acoustic side than anything else. Yeah. Um, and then now, you know, we hear this like grunge rock and roll, like female, like empowering female. And like that, you know, that artist development from like that first time that she introduced me to whatever it was that you were singing to like your music now, like what was that development process for you personally? Honestly, I've, I've always wanted to make big, loud rock and roll. Because when I go to a show, I want it to punch me in the face with a wall of sound. And that's what makes, that's what gets me excited. But I didn't really have the means to do that because it takes a lot of production. It takes a lot of instruments and takes people that know how to play those <laughs> instruments. So I've just been on this journey of meeting people and finding who I vibe with and who likes where I'm trying to go and who's trying to go somewhere similar. And I'm stoked on the sound that I have now. <laughs> but would you say like the sound that you have now, like the writing process was different before or would you say the writing process is similar to what you're doing now? It's similar. I always write, you know, from deep inside where the feelies come from. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess the, the production could change no matter the production really matters when it comes to the vibe of a song. Yeah. And I always knew I wanted that big, loud, badass sound. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's dive a little bit more about your songwriting and, you know, how did you first discover how to write music? Were you like one of those artists that you used to just write journals or you used to write like poetry and then just kind of transform them into the songs that, that you're working on now? Or like, what was that process like for you? I think I was eight years old when I wrote my first song. I was sitting on a swing, like looking at my feet go over the sun, having this really like meditative moment. Like I got my feet over the sun. And I mean, I always sang, my parents say that I used to sing before I could talk. And the arts and music and the musical theater, that too has always been a huge thing for me. So I, every song's different. Sometimes I start with lyrics journaling, writing my thoughts down. Other times I have a melody stuck in my head and it won't come out and I'll write words to that. It's different every time. And where did that love for like heavier music, you know, rock and roll kind of happened for you? Was it something your parents kind of introduced you to at an early age or is this something you kind of discovered on your own? No, my parents kind of only introduced me to like Persian music, classical, that kind of stuff, like some opera, some flamenco guitar, that kind of stuff. But it was in middle school. Everyone has their angsty phase in middle school. <laughs> I had a huge grunge phase. So it was like Nirvana, Smashing Pumpkins, Incubus, that whole grunge era. So now, you know, you just dropped the debut single for, for the band. Like, 
talk talk to me about five minutes and like when did this song be, when did the writing process kind of begin for this song was were, did you know you were writing this song or was this one of those moments where something just came out and then eventually the song kind of formed itself that song one of the cool things about playing with a band is you get to jam and things can just come out and I don't remember. I've had the song for a while because <laughs> obviously I've been working on this project for a while. But it was one of those things where I had a riff and I had a, like, it was like banging and it evoked a feeling out of me. And I was just like, I'm going to write about some nasty stuff. <laughs> but did you know like this was going to be your debut? Like I feel like because you've had it for so long, but you've had other music as well that you've kind of tested live and, and kind of like showed here and there. But you know what what made you want to make five minutes like the official debut single yeah after playing with the band and kind of solidifying a good handful of songs that i knew what i wanted to put on an album this track honestly just stood out and i think in terms of like live shows it's usually the one that we open with it's usually the one that we would play first just because it's straight out the gate it's like i'm not messing around here it is here we go, we're going. That's sick. And what was that production process like when you guys, did you guys record it in the studio or did you guys do it like all within the band? We DIY'd it and I'm nice. super lucky because Ben, our drummer, kind of took the project under his wing and he gets all the engineering and the production credits for, for the whole album. Um, we did everything in our lockout. <laughs> all the drums, all the guitars, all the bass, vocals in just, a crappy sweat box. It was really hot. We recorded it over summer, um, but we did it all ourselves. And it, I honestly, the first time I heard it, I cried because A, it sounded way better than I thought it would because <laughs> the acoustics in that room are not great. But B, it was like the first time I had heard my songs sound clean in a way or, pr or produced in a way or professional because we had just been playing them live. So that was really fun because I got to learn as Ben was learning about miking and, and phasing and all this sort of stuff that I had no idea about. That's cool that you kind of got to learn it as you were going. I don't feel like a lot of bands get that opportunity nowadays. I feel like it's like they either have a dedicated producer that just basically takes care of that or, yeah. you know, eventually they get to go into the studio. But like, I feel like the DIY kind of approach, I mean, I grew up with like, the warp tour scene so like for me diy is like the way for everything uh, so the fact that you guys did it diy like what um what kind of challenges did you guys face in doing so aside from having that small hot kind of space with no acoustics it was so hot <laughs> it was so hot i was delirious um i guess when you're not a professional obviously you don't know as much professional like sound engineer so we kind of had to do some research, call up some friends, be like, hey, I'm having this issue <laughs> with this microphone and just troubleshooting. And I guess it takes takes a little more elbow grease, takes a lot of a lot of hard work, more time. But the good thing is you get to learn like you and then you can do it yourself and you're not relying on somebody else to make you sound the way that you want to sound. You kind of have an idea and you get to make it. And the fact that, like you mentioned, like it's, you know, everybody's learning, everybody, you know, you have to do that lifeline to get to get help. But how did you challenge yourself vocally? Because if, if a producer is there, usually they know how to press your buttons and have you reach a higher range or a different, you know, get out of your comfort zone. But because you guys were all kind of new at this, like how were you able to challenge your vocals and, and try different ranges? And especially that grit at the end is like incredible. So how did, how did you go about that? This it's the first time that I've ever sang like that. Like I grew up doing Persian music and musical theater, but I have had this desire to scream and be let the wild and crazy side out. So I, another good thing about making stuff with your friends is that you're with your friends and you're more comfortable around your friends. So if you mess up, it's like, it's cool just do another one, roll the tape again. Like I want to try again. And 
I definitely push myself with those screams, <laughs> but it's so much fun. <laughs> it, it just blows my mind that there was like, for lack of a better word, it was, there wasn't a professional in the room trying to help you guys, you know, because towards the end of the song, and I've told you this before, like that, that long hold on that, that scream with the grit at the same time, like the way that you sustained it, like it was, it didn't feel like you were uncomfortable singing it like that. It felt like you were just in the, like just steady, like comfort zone. Um, so how challenging was that part and in, in sp like specifically that part? And how did you learn to kind of control your vocals the way that you did? Um, live shows, playing live shows is great practice. And unfortunately this year we, we didn't get to do any, I think we did two before the world. Um, but playing in front of an audience, like I, I'm, everyone struggles with their own insecurities, but when you push yourself and you say, I'm going to put myself in this situation, it's live. Like no, there's no auto tune. Like there's no second take. There's people they're watching. They're waiting for you. That really helped me learn how to control my voice and how to be confident in trying new things vocally. And the fact that you guys had, you know, had the opportunity last year to kind of test the waters with different music and live shows, like did those experiences kind of help you become a better writer or did it change your, your focus on how you wrote, you know, having that live show in mind or having that audience in mind or having that, that certain stage in mind? Like did that, did you find yourself changing in that way? A little bit. Yeah. I mean, I miss live shows so much. I miss, <laughs> I miss people. I miss like talking to people in real life, just like right. random, bouncing off everyone's energy. And when you perform and people come up to you after and they're like, Hey, that was dope. You learn what people like, you learn what your audience is, you learn who your scene is, if that's a thing that you're trying to be part of. And I mean, I always wanted to write for the live show because that's fun for me. That's It's fun to go to shows and see people sweat and give it their all on stage. So for sure. That's cool. So what's next for you? I mean, obviously the single is like super new, but I'm sure there's so much more that you, you have going on with the band. And I feel like you already have a plan for the next you know few releases. So how are you kind of balancing that? Because I feel like you're also like the, you're, you're obviously, you know, the singer, the artist, but I feel like you're also like kind of like the management, like in control of the whole project. So what is going on as far as the band goes? Well, we've got more singles on their way. The next one's coming in February. Nice. And then more after that. And then an album in spring. And Working fast some music videos to go with it. And yeah, I mean, I am kind of juggling all of it, but we founded a label called Bentney Records with homies, uh, cause Ben and Connor, they have their own bands as well. Um, it's the absurd and karma vulture. So we've kind of created like a super mega team and we're all helping each other out with, with all sorts of stuff. That's dope. DIY. <laughs> That's dope. I mean, you're doing what a lot of bands don't get the opportunity to do until they've like made it in life. So <laughs> it's kind of cool that you're kind of starting with that whole package all at once. Yeah. I mean, I'm not the type of person to sit around and wait for someone to hand me my idea of success. I mean, I'm yeah. realistic about it. Being a musician is not all peaches and roses and i'm aware of that <laughs> right so i'm willing to put put the work in and do everything that i can that's dope now jasmine lastly to close us off like what what is this whole band all about like what does this band mean to you well to me it's everything it's my life <laughs> <laughs> but what i want it to be is is honestly just like a celebration of of life and like have fun don't don't work too hard. I mean, do work too hard, but also like, don't take everything too seriously because you only got one, one life and like you should spend it how you want to spend it. And for me, that means having fun, going to shows, kicking ass, just, just living. 
Awesome. Well, congratulations. Like I'm excited that this has finally happened. I, I mean, like I said, this has been a long time in the making. You've been trying to figure out what works to make this project kind of kickstart. So, um, and this was such a sick song to kind of debut with. So congrats once again. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> It's a ride. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. it is. I'm sure it is. Just don't stop. <laughs>